Hey guys, Matt here from The Tool Merchants. In this video, I'm excited to share with you what I think is one of the most important and valuable aspects of garden tool maintenance and hand tool maintenance in general. And that is keeping your garden tools sharp. Now, whether you're weeding or digging holes for tree planting, um, having a sharp tool is essentially gonna make your work that much easier. Sharp tools cut better, cut faster and cut more easily. So at the end of the day, your work's gonna be easier and more enjoyable with a sharp tool. Now, this video is for you if you fall into one of two groups. The first group is you if you have never considered sharpening your garden tools at all. It's just never crossed your radar. It's not a, real, a thing you really thought about, okay? So this video is for you. If you're in the second group, then perhaps you have thought about sharpening your garden tools before. Maybe you've got a friend who does it. Uh, maybe you work at a farm that maintains a sharp garden tool. So you've thought about it and you know it's something that people do. Um, but perhaps you haven't known where to begin, or maybe you've been a little bit intimidated or daunted by the prospect. I totally understand the, that, that feeling of being a little bit intimidated. When I was first starting out in gardening and farming, I definitely felt that way. And I know a lot of friends and neighbors who also feel the same way about sharpening. You don't want to mess up your tool. And if you don't know what you're doing, you kind of feel like, oh, I could screw things up here. So I want to respond to that with two things. The first is that you can't screw this up that badly. Today we're just going to be using a simple sharpening file, a human powered tool. We're not going to be using any jigs, anything complicated, any um, electric powered uh, grinding wheels or anything like that. So there is really no downside risk. You're, you're very unlikely to damage your tool. At the very worst, you will just have to do a little bit more filing to maybe make up for an error. The second thing that I would say is that sharpening a garden tool is the perfect place to sort of begin a sharpening journey. Unlike a kitchen knife or an axe or even a pair of pruners, a garden tool doesn't need to be razor sharp. So this is really a good enough is perfect kind of scenario. If you just get it sharp enough, you're going to really notice a big difference. Um, and with the steps that we go through in this video, I think you're going to find it quite easy. So let's head over to the shop and get going. Before we get into the act of sharpening itself, we're going to talk a little bit about selecting the appropriate file for the job. And then we'll talk briefly about cleaning your garden tool and also getting set up properly. So files come in a variety of lengths and also grits, which determine um, both how quickly the file removes metal, how quickly it sharpens, and also um, how smooth of a cutting edge it leaves behind when you're done. So for the purposes of sharpening garden tools, I recommend a file that's 8 to 12 inches in length. Um, these two here on the left are the ones we carry in our store, and they are 10 inches. So 10 inches is great, but either 8 or 12 will work. You also want to make sure that your file has a handle. If you're purchasing in the, in the hardware store and you see a file that looks like this, make sure that you buy some kind of handle that slides onto the tang. A file without a handle is, is hard to use and it's also not very safe. So as far as grits go, general file grits are called bastard, so bastard file. Then you have second cut file and then you have smooth cut file. Right, so bastard is the coarsest in that category. It's going to cut the fastest, but by the same token, it's going to leave the roughest edge behind. You'll often see bastard files in hardware stores, and they work fine for sharpening garden tools. Over the years, I've come to really like a second cut file, which is just a little bit smoother. It leaves a little bit smoother edge than the bastard file. It cuts a little bit slower, but it's not so slow that it's just onerous to use. Smooth cut, which is the smoothest, I think is not really applicable to garden tools. So you want to get either a bastard cut or a second cut. The last thing to consider, files also come in what are called single cut or double cut. Now the way files work is they essentially have teeth or cutting lines that are that are etched into the metal of the file. And those teeth are what do the cutting or what remove metal of your tool. Now a single cut file has the cutting lines only running in one direction. So when you look closely at the file, you will see a pattern like that. A double cut file, on the other hand, is going to have cutting teeth running in two directions opposite each other. So it's double cut, like that. Now this kind of file cuts even faster 
than a single cut. By the same token, it leaves a much coarser edge. So we do offer this blue handled file that has a double cut on one side. And the reason we offer it is because it's nice for working on really dull or damaged tools because it removes metal very quickly. Um, and then once you have sort of shaped your edge, you can move up to this second cut file and get your final edge before you're ready to go work with your tool again. So if your tool has any surface rust on it. It's a good idea to clean it up before you sharpen it. Any rust or or dirt uh, will just clog your file quickly and your file won't cut as well if it's clogged. So for light surface rust I have really come to like these rust erasing blocks and this is sort of like a, a grit that's been mixed with rubber to form these blocks and so they're really nice to hold and um, sort of conform to the edge nicely. You could just use sandpaper, but I find these are easier to use. So those work nicely. For heavier rust, you may want to use one of these wire wheels um, that attach to a handheld drill. And if you have really thick rust, you can also um, soak your tool head in white vinegar uh, for some hours, maybe overnight. And then the rust wipes away really easily with a rag. If you do do that, the, the vinegar bath, make sure that you um, oil your tool lightly afterward because tools, uh, in my experience, tend to pick up moisture and rust very quickly after the vinegar bath. Now, if possible, it's nice to secure your tool in some way and a vise works really well for that. Uh, I use the rag to just protect the handle from getting marred and this way you have both hands free to hold and guide the file as you sharpen. Now if you don't have a vise or other means of securing the tool or perhaps you're out in the field, you're out in the garden working, um, I like to just put my, my arm and my hand and my arm on top of the tool head and pushing, pushing down and then I can file, right? The kind of the idea is just to, to minimize unwanted movement of the tool uh, as much as possible. For short handle tools, um, if I have a sturdy bench, you know, like this Japanese hand hoe, I'll, I'll put downward pressure with one hand and then I can file the edge with the other. If I was out in the field with this tool, I might hold it securely against my body here, the handle, and then file like that. Kind of um, experiment with, with what feels comfortable. So, <clears throat> so now that we have our file picked out, we've cleaned our tool head, and we have our tool secured if possible, it's time to get into the sharpening stroke. Now if you're just starting out, one thing that's nice to do is to color in the bevel with a Sharpie. Um, the reason to do this is because as you sharpen, it's going to remove sh the Sharpie and show you really clearly where you are removing metal and where you're not. So you've got your file in your hand. Go ahead and lay it on the tool and take a look down the length of the blade and tilt your hand till you find an angle that more or less matches with the angle that's already there. The angle, the bevel angle that comes from the manufacturer is pretty is, is a pretty good place to start. If you're unsure about the angle, one thing to keep in mind is that the steeper the angle, the stronger the edge is going to be. Um, so it's going to be more durable. And that's just because it's thicker when it's steeper. And what I mean by steeper is if I drop my hand down, that creates a steeper angle. Um, and that's going to be a stronger blade. If you make it a, a, a more shallow angle, right, um, by lifting your hand, it is going to be much thinner by the time you make it sharp, and it's going to be much less durable. So err on the side of thicker for garden tools. So now that you've got your angle more or less um, figured out, and, and also know that you can adjust it as you go, put the tip of the file on the left side of the blade, and begin filing by pushing the file away from you and also to the right across the cutting edge. So I'm using some downward pressure, which is where my left hand comes in handy because I'm using that mostly for the downward pressure. And I'm maintaining that angle 
by mostly having this be a movement that comes from my elbow and shoulders. You can see my wrists stay pretty much locked. Pushing away from myself. You'll also notice that I'm not going back and forth. Um, when you're filing with a file, you only need to sharpen in one direction. That will keep your file from getting clogged very quickly. Um, and I think it's also easier to control when you're just sharpening in one direction. So again, starting at that one side, ending up at the other, and then lifting the file and coming back to the beginning. So great thing about filing is you get a lot of feedback. Um, you're going to see metal shavings. You're going to feel how it's a little bit different, how, the, how it sounds and feels when you're actually removing metal. If you don't push down hard enough, it just slides right across. But you can really feel it and hear it when you're actually removing metal. Let's take a close up and look at the Sharpie. So what I hope you can see here is that after that first round of filing, I have removed metal from the top part of the bevel, but because that black sharpie is still there, it's letting me know that I have not actually reached the actual cutting edge of this tool. Now if you didn't have the sharpie, what you could look for is just the shiny new metal that gets revealed when you file. So that's another part of the feedback. Um, the sharpie is just really nice and hard to miss. So what I, what I need to do here is one of two things. If I continue to file at the same angle that I started with, what will happen is this bevel will get wider and I will actually begin to hit that cutting edge where there's still Sharpie left over. The other thing I could do if I want to um, make this happen more quickly is drop my hand down. Instead of looking something like this, it might look something like this. So I'll be getting that, um, that cutting edge and removing that Sharpie. Okay, so let's do another round here. I've dropped my hand down just a little bit. I can already see that the Sharpie is disappearing right along that cutting edge. So once you have removed all the Sharpie or brought up fresh clean metal, what you want to feel for is what's called a burr. And the burr is a little bit of metal, a wire edge, sometimes called, a thin, thin, I guess, roll of metal that gets pushed over to the back side of the tool as you file. So as you're removing metal from the top, you also push a little bit back to this back side and you can feel it very distinctly if you rub your finger across the cutting edge this way, never that way, always this way, and you'll feel it. And once you do, that lets you know that essentially you have sharpened enough. That lets you know that you've actually hit this cutting edge. And again, like I said before in the intro to this video, Garden tools don't need to be razor sharp, so if you don't actually bring up a burr, it's not essential. But it is a good thing to start to feel for, especially if you think you might be sharpening other things in the future. So once you feel that burr, you can remove it by taking your file and very gently sliding it on the back side of the cutting edge. Again, just pulling in one direction, not back and forth, just one direction with a very light touch, and you should be able to file away that burr. The last thing I wanted to mention, guys, before we wrap up is that files do clog over time. Um, the little metal shavings that you're removing from your tool will fill up these little spaces in between the cutting teeth. So to remedy that, you simply take a stiff brush of some kind. This is actually just a plastic bristle brush and you rub out the metal shavings. They do sell um, special brushes called filing cards um, for this very purpose, um, but they are not strictly necessary and any stiff brush uh, will do the trick just fine. And along the lines of file care, 
files do have a usable lifespan. Uh, they will get dull over time and wear out. Um, one simple way to maintain them is to keep them wrapped up in some way when they're not in use. You know, just like a kitchen knife will get dull faster if you put it in with your other uh, forks and knives and, and things and it's bouncing around in a drawer. Uh, the same thing will happen to your file if you just throw it in with the rest of your tools. Keep it wrapped up. A simple rag or old t-shirt will do the trick just fine. Well, that wraps up this tutorial on sharpening garden tools. I hope it was helpful for you and I encourage you to get out there and uh, give it a try for yourself. Please leave a comment down below. I would love to get your feedback on this video, what you liked or what you think I can do better. And come on over to thetoolmerchants.com and check out uh, the, the high quality garden tools we have and some of the other information we've got over there. Take care.